Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope everyone is doing well. Today we're going to talk about storage and storage particularly for the home lab, uh, as well as production use cases. Over the past several years, I have invested into NVMe storage. NVMe uh, was a premium just a few years back. However, now NVMe has become extremely affordable. While CPU and memory are extremely important considerations for home lab performance and production for that matter, storage is often overlooked as a crucial part of the performance that you will achieve for any given set of hardware. What I tend to do is buy a little bit less on the CPU side uh, and maybe a little bit less memory, go for ultra fast storage. And I can tell you, you will not be disappointed if you put some investment into your storage performance. So stick around for this video. We're going to take a little bit deeper dive into NVMe. What is it exactly? What are the advantages? Are there any downsides that I have seen over the past few years? I'm gonna let you guys know my thoughts on that subject. So what exactly is NVMe? What makes these drives so much quicker than standard SSDs? Let's take a look at the architecture. NVMe drives such as this Samsung 980 Pro represent some of the most performant and fastest storage that you can buy, at least from a consumer perspective. NVMe drives, unlike SATA and SCSI, do not need a storage controller to communicate with the central processing unit, or as we know it, the CPU. And this makes communication with the CPU extremely fast. So think of it this way, NVMe drives have direct line of sight access to the CPU. They plug into the specialized M2 slots that you've seen on modern motherboards. They also sport 64K queues, along with the capability to send 64,000 commands per queue. It also makes use of four PCI lanes. All of these specifications result in storage that is extremely fast. And when you're looking to build home lab servers and extremely fast storage, NVMe certainly fits the bill. In my home lab environment, I have a total of five Supermicro servers. Three of those Supermicro servers are configured in a VMware vSAN cluster. VMware vSAN is a unique software-defined storage solution that presents object storage or a logical object storage-based data store that you are able to run your virtual machines across. Each of those VMware vSAN hosts contribute local storage to that logical VMware vSAN data store. Let's take a look at my home lab environment specifics, and I'll show you how I'm using these NVMe drives in my vSAN data store. I'm logged into my vSphere client here currently, and I'm going to take a look and show you guys how we are configured with the uh, NVMe drives in the vSAN data store. So if I go to vSAN cluster, I'm gonna click on the configure tab. I'm going to go down to vSAN, and disk management. So when we click on disk management, we're going to see the three vSphere ESXi hosts that I currently have in this vSAN cluster. We're going to take a look at the view disks uh, information. So I'm gonna click view disks and in the first host, we're going to take a look at a disk group. vSAN has the concept of a disk group that includes both a capacity tier and a cache tier. So let's expand this disk group and we're gonna uh, see how this is configured exactly, which NVMe drives I'm using for what, and 
my experience with uh, running these drives in the home lab environment. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you guys, I have ran all consumer grade NVMe drives. Now, I know there are enterprise drives out there. Uh, many will say don't run uh, vSAN uh, on consumer grade equipment, and I totally agree with that in uh, enterprise production environments, most definitely. However, for home lab and my purposes, I want to say that the consumer grade Samsung Evo drives have served me extremely well. And I will get to some of the failures that I have seen and how I've handled those. But first off, let's take a look inside of the vSAN data store. Uh, as you can see, we have under the claimed as column, you can quickly identify which NVMe drive is used as the cache tier and which drives are used as the capacity tier drives. Now with vSAN and a vSAN disk group, the, the minimum requirement is you must have a cache tier drive and you must have at least one capacity tier drive. In my configuration, I have, of course, a cache tier uh, that is served by a Samsung 970 Evo, uh, and it's a small 256 gig NVMe drive. So extremely small drive uh, that is operating as the cache tier. Then I have the larger Samsung Evo one terabyte drives that are serving as my capacity tier. Now, as you can see, the 960 at this point is long in the tooth, but I want to speak to this as you can tell by the age of the drive, the model that I have, that I have not seen any failures with the uh, capacity tier. Now, I will say this, I have replaced, I think two or three of the cache tier but when we think about what the cache tier actually does, all of the data is flowing through that cache tier. So it is the part of your disk group that's really getting a workout. So with that uh, cache tier, uh, you're going to expect to see uh, more failures as far as that goes. And as you can see, my methodology for refreshing or uh, upgrading technology or um, getting newer drives has been around any failures that I've seen. When my uh, cache tier failed, initially I had a Samsung Evo 960. And as you can see, I have now a 970 that has been serving me well for quite some time now. So that's kind of how I've approached failures. I have not had so many failures that I am saying to myself, wow, I can no longer use consumer gear. Uh, as far as the NVMe storage. And my home lab runs 24 by seven by 365. All three of these hosts, these vSAN hosts that I have in this vSAN cluster, I have ran just like a production environment, nonstop. They never go down unless I have some type of failure. So these drives have really gotten a workout and I have to say I've had really good success and hopefully that is some real world feedback that you guys can take if you're thinking about building um, a home lab environment based on NVMe drives. And this goes without saying uh, even non VMware technologies. Uh, I am a proponent of NVMe storage for lab environments. You can get more density. And from my experience, you can actually run virtual machines in a leaner fashion from a memory perspective, because even when you do get those paging operations, your underlying storage is fast enough that with those page out operations, when it is a little bit lean on memory, you don't see that in real world um, behavior and performance or perceived performance. Now, obviously if it's bad enough, you will see that even with EM NVMe drives. However, in my mind, this is where storage, when it comes to lab environments, running super dense environments over provisioning environments way more than recommended. Uh, I, I'm certainly doing that in my home lab. However, fast, quick performance storage allows you to do that and to get away with it. Production environments, performance, longevity, uh, best practices, all of those things need to be balanced out. Hopefully my real world experience with running these NVMe drives uh, in home lab NVMe servers 
will serve you guys well when you're making decisions on possibly refreshing your home lab or using NVMe storage uh, for your storage tier um, as part of your home lab environment. You may wonder if you use the extremely low profile super micro servers such as an E300 for instance or E301, 302 model, how do you get the density of NVMe drives into those small form factor super micro servers, especially if you only have a single M2 slot on the motherboard? Well, Supermicro has something, uh, a add-in card, and hopefully you guys can see this if I can get it to focus. It is a Supermicro AOC SLG3 2M2 card. And what this card does is it's actually a PCI Express slot card that has a, a two slot, a two M2 slots uh, built into the PCI Express card itself allowing you to mount the two NVMe uh, cards or two NVMe, NVMe drives uh, on this particular card. So what I normally do with my Supermicro servers is I have a single NVMe drive that I have directly plugged into the M2 slot on the motherboard. Then I use this add-in Supermicro card to add the additional two drives that allow me to run the disk group. So I'm typically running the single cache tier NVMe drive with the two capacity tier NVMe drives to make up the disk group. NVMe storage is a fantastic option and a low cost option now with consumer grade NVMe drives for the home lab environment. I highly recommend any of you guys that are thinking about either refreshing your home lab hardware or getting into a home lab environment for learning purposes and just playing around doing what we do uh, in the community with our home lab environments to strongly consider NVMe storage. Having ultra fast storage provides many opportunities to over provision, to have dense environments and to ultimately scale down the hardware from a CPU and memory perspective in certain use cases. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts and overview of the configuration of my home lab environment, how I'm using NVMe storage in my VMware vSAN hosts in the home lab. Hopefully this gives you guys some incentive to maybe take a look, a fresh look at NVMe storage. Well, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you.